In 1748, Frederick County was formed from the western boundary of Prince George's County and included present-day Montgomery County. Slowly, a foundation began to evolve. But within a few years, settlers were touched by the French and Indian Wars. In April of 1755, General Edward Braddock led British colonial troops through the county en route to Fort Cumberland. Troops camped in Rockville and proceeded to Dowden's Ordinary, a tavern that stood in present-day Clarksburg. Volunteers and conscripts were added along the way. Food, supplies, and wagons were requisitioned from local farmers, and citizens were threatened by border raids. When the Treaty of Paris ended the French and Indian Wars in 1763, citizens enjoyed a respite from conflict. But before long, new tensions developed. The issue of slavery posed both a moral and economic question that divided many citizens in the county. Because of the decline in tobacco farming, Montgomery County never had large plantations with hundreds of slaves. Yet, ironically, the county was the setting for one of the most famous anti-slavery books of all time, Uncle Tom's Cabin. The memoirs of Josiah Henson, a runaway slave who once lived in a cabin not far from old Georgetown Road, form the basis of Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel. Josiah Henson's own writings give a glimpse of the everyday life of a slave. We lodge in log huts and on the bare ground. Wooden floors were an unknown luxury. In a single room were huddled like cattle, ten or a dozen persons, men, women, and children. Our beds were collections of straw and old rags, thrown down in corners and boxed in with boards. The wind whistled and the rain and snow blew in through the cracks, and the damp earth soaked in the moisture till the floor was miry as a pigsty. Both of my sets of grandparents were slaves. My father's family was in Richmond, Virginia, and my mother's family was right here in Montgomery County. My grandfather was sold over in the Seneca area to a, a family named Joseph White. My grandmother was a slave in the Poosville area, all of her sisters and brothers. Slavery, states' rights, and secession from the Union divided the United States, and so too divided the citizens of Montgomery County. In the le years leading up to the war, Montgomery County, like a lot of Maryland, was, uh, were Southern Democrats, or particularly just Democrats at that particular time. Maryland and Montgomery County being a slave-owning state and county, there were roughly 770, I believe, slave owners in Montgomery County, majority of them holding a few slaves. But uh, they were more socially as well as economically tied to Virginia. There were more than 100 young men who crossed the Potomac and fought for the Confederacy, volunteers, mostly cavalrymen. But there are also more than 100 young men who joined Mr. Lincoln's army voluntarily, mostly infantrymen. So the county is pretty equally divided, and uh, there is a class distinction that's made there between the people who supported uh, their country and fought in blue uniforms and those who fought for the lost cause of the Confederacy. As the Civil War gained steam, Montgomery County never found itself as a major theater of war, but its location was strategic. Uh, as the war moved south or moved north, uh, at times there were many Union troops in Montgomery County, and other times very few. There were, however, in each of the war years, some major movements of Union troops and Confederate troops through Montgomery County. Uh, the first occasion was in October of 1861 uh, for the Battle of Ball's Bluff over near Leesburg, Virginia. The battle took place on Virginia soil, but all of the Union troops involved had been stationed up around Poolsville. Uh, this was a disaster for uh, the Union forces in which they were pushed back into the river, and many of the Union troops drowned. Throughout the war years, there were other troop movements throughout Montgomery County. The Antietam Campaign, Jubal Early's Confederate raid on Washington, and Jeb Stuart on his way to Gettysburg. Under orders to protect Washington and Baltimore, General McClellan's Union Army 
spread itself throughout Montgomery County. One wing went out River Road uh, before crossing, moving up toward Frederick. The second wing, the middle wing, came right up Route 355 through Gettysburg and so forth to Frederick. And the third wing, the right wing, moved up the Brookville Pike through Brookville and up to the New Market area before converging on Frederick. As the war was nearing an end, the question of slavery was still unresolved for the state of Maryland. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation issued in January 1864 only applied to states that had seceded from the Union. Since Maryland never seceded, it maintained its slave status. It wasn't until 1864 where a new constitutional convention took place in, in Maryland where slavery within the state was abolished. The first thing a black family wanted was a piece of land. That was their, that was their heart's desire, to have a piece of land. So they got their land, usually from their former masters. It was a part of the land that the master couldn't farm. It was down in the woods, or it was marshy, or stony, or something. It was part of land that he didn't want. But those black people took that marshy, stony, woodsy land and made communities out of them. The end of the war and the emancipation of slaves brought many changes. But the idea of a united country was far from a reality.